Welcome to the Osmosis Daily Report on the coronavirus pandemic. I'm Dr. Risha Desai. I'm the Chief Medical Officer here at Osmosis. I'm also a pediatric infectious disease doctor, and I used to work in the Division of Viral Diseases at the CDC doing viral outbreak research. Today I'm going to talk about African Americans and COVID-19. So to start us out, this is some CDC data, and it covers deaths distributed by race. And you can see that 19.9% of uh, deaths in the United States from COVID-19 have occurred among African Americans. Now looking at the U.S. Census Bureau data, you can see that African Americans make up only about 13% of America. So obviously they're overrepresented in terms of COVID-19 deaths. Now there's an interesting paper on COVID-19 and African Americans that was written up recently and they looked at data from Johns Hopkins University and the American Community Survey at black communities or counties versus white counties. And they found that the death rate for predominantly black counties is sixfold higher than predominantly white counties. So what are some possible reasons for this? And you know, to get us started, I wanted to talk about exposures. And you can see that right now, because people are essentially trying to isolate themselves from the virus, a big part of it is who can work from home. This is U.S. Bureau of Labor statistic data, and you can see that 19.7% of African Americans are able to work from home, and compare that to white Americans, that's closer to 30%. So obviously if you can't work from home, you're gonna be more exposed. Now what about home? What's the exposure at home like? And there's some Pew Research Center data that I pulled up here, and wanted to compare households. And this is the table showing the share of the population in a multi-generational household by race and ethnicity. So you can see that if you look at black families versus white families, you see much more of a proportion in two, three, and more than three generations living together in one house in the black families. And so what that means is that you might have a younger person exposing an older person, and we know older folks are at higher risk. So that means you have exposures at the workplace as well as in the home. Now we know one thing that health depends on is health care, and having health insurance is a big part of health care. So let's take a look at who has health insurance and who loses health insurance by race. This is a graph of age-specific insurance loss, and you can see the rates uh, across time. So you can see that between ages 18 and 65 are where there is a spike in Hispanics and African Americans essentially losing health insurance at higher rates than you see for others. Now flipping around and looking at health, you can see the CDC has a nice little page here on African American health, summarizes great data. So let's just take a look at that together. They've essentially isolated the problem quite well, I think, or phrased it quite well. Young African Americans are living with diseases that are much more common at older ages, and they compare two cohorts, African Americans with whites, and you can see that essentially at every single age group there's more disease, more high blood pressure, diabetes, stroke, you name it, among African Americans. And as a result, there's more death among African Americans from all causes at all age groups. So that's really quite concerning because that, what that tells you is that these comorbidities that we know exist for COVID-19, all these major ones like heart disease, lung disease, uh, asthma, uh, diabetes, all of these are going to be more predominant in African Americans. And there are a number of underlying reasons for this data, right? So if you think about uh, things like income inequality and all the things that come from income inequality, that includes access to good food, access to good exercise uh, locations like gyms that you can go to very easily, and also having the means to get there and, and making that convenient and in your community. We know there are things like food deserts, and, and on the flip side, they're the opposite. There's more um, you know, tobacco products and alcohol sales and liquor stores and things like that in certain communities. And what that does is it really sets up a stacked deck where if you're growing up in a community where you don't have access to all these privileges like good food and good exercise, you're going to end up having worse health outcomes over the course of your life. So now let's take it one step further. Let's say a person goes and gets checked out at a hospital. What happens then? Well, there's systematic bias between how a clinician views a black person versus a white person. And in fact, this has been well documented. And this study actually, uh, I think, has a really great analysis. I'm just going to highlight a few paragraphs here 
that I'd love for you to look at. Uh, this one in particular, broadly speaking, there are two ways that racial disparities in pain management, that's what this study was about, could arise. They talk about the fact that you either believe someone has pain uh, and it's explicit and you're not treating it well for whatever reason, or you don't think that they have pain and it's an implicit sort of subconscious bias that you might have. And on that point, they have a really interesting line here. They said this research has shown that people assume a priori that blacks feel less pain than whites, meaning they just walk in with these assumptions. They actually name a couple of these assumptions down here at the bottom of the paragraph. They say there's a belief that blacks have thicker skin uh, than white people. There's a belief that black people's blood coagulates more quickly than white people's blood. This is literally unfounded, but these myths exist even among clinicians who've gone through rigorous scientific training. And this really plays out in a terrible way because what happens is that black patients literally don't get treated for things like pain, something as basic as pain, and they suffer as a result of it. And so it brings me to this paper on experience discrimination and racial differences in a leukocyte gene expression. This is a paper out of UCLA. And what they did in this study, they were looking at the cytokine profile of white cells, immune cells, and they wanted to see if that looked different between black and white patients. And a few interesting findings. They head off their discussion by saying that African Americans show a higher level of inflammatory signaling and higher levels of stress-related neuroendocrine signaling than did European Americans. And, and we know that these inflammatory signals, especially if they're long-lasting, which is the implication here, if they're chronic, those cytokines damage the inner lining of the blood vessels. In fact, that chronic inflammation is one of the major causes of heart disease. Their second finding was something that just totally blew me away. They said a substantial fraction of that elevated inflammatory signaling was, they believe, associated with increased experiences of racial discrimination because they asked people in the study, have you been discriminated against? And in fact, what they found was that the African Americans in the group said in general that they were much more than the European Americans in the group. And so as a result, what they found is that that was predictive of a large portion of the cytokine signaling. So what that means is that if we know that there's racial discrimination happening pervasively, including in the hospital setting, and we now are seeing evidence that that could be causing changes in the cells of African Americans, that, that the cells themselves are actually creating different cytokine profiles and that these new cytokines or different cytokines are creating an inflammatory state within the blood vessels, and that leads to these comorbid conditions like heart disease, that you have now a really straight line between racial discrimination and comorbid illness, and we know that's a setup for COVID-19, and that's now, I think, a pretty, uh, and so I think that's a big part of the question here, is why do we see higher levels of death among African Americans? It's happening at so many levels, right? It's happening because they're exposed more, they have poor health conditions and comorbidities, there's the income inequality piece and everything that comes from that as well. And we see that now there's this biological connection that explains uh, how this mechanistically could be setting them up uh, for worse outcomes also. All right, well, thanks for tuning in. Hit the red subscribe button or the bell icon if you wanna get daily updates. Check out osmosis.org slash COVID-19 for all of our resources. Remember to do your part to help flatten the curve and raise the line. We're all in this together. Thanks a lot.